Good morning. What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Currently Building Generational Wealth Lifestyle. I am one of your hosts, the one, the only, and the flyers on today. I am Daniel Bailey. And of course, God is the ultimate host. What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Currently Building Generational Wealth Lifestyle. So today, Y'all already know what day it is. It is a what? It's Friday. And what do we do on Fridays? We sing. It's Friday and ready to jam. Pick up my girls. Hey, it's Friday. It's Friday. It is Friday. Get my good people. Welcome back to another episode of Currently Building Generational Wealth. So today, in today's episode, we are going to do something a little special. Okay, we're doing something special. Shout out to y'all over here on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna give y'all a little preview of what we're doing tomorrow. Yes, I am recording on my laptop and my phone. Okay, we're getting it done today. Um, so today we are going to start a mini series. Okay, let me tell y'all how this mini series came about. Um, I was it was Thursday this morning. Um, I'm recording this video on January the 21st. And so, you know, I was um, going, getting up this morning, getting ready to go into prayer. And so God, um, the Holy Spirit had dropped in my spirit, like you should do um, training on how to complete a CSM 1500. And I was just like, oh, okay. And so, because like I had told y'all in last week's video, I had wanted to, um, I asked y'all about, do y'all want to see a mini series on how to, you know, keep up and keep track with how much income you have. But this, um, this morning <laughs> when I was getting prepared for the day, the Lord was like, how you going to um, teach them about how to keep up, how to keep track with money, but you never actually taught anybody other than your couch to private practice how to complete a CSM 1500. He was like, don't you think that you may want to do that first? And I was like, bet, that's a good idea. So that's what we're going to do. The next three episodes, we are going to do a billing episodes, okay? We're going to have a mini series. So the first one is going to be about the one I'm recording today um, is an introduction to the CS 1500. So I'm going to explain to you guys what that is. The second one is going to be how to complete a CSM 1500, okay? And the third one, the last one, but the not least, how to submit a corrected claim. So you do not want to miss that. Stay tuned to all of these videos, okay? Boom, you're done. All right, so got that pre-recorded video for YouTube, so y'all gonna see that on my news feed, all right? So nonetheless, today what you are seeing, you are introduced to Alf, Office Ally. I am introducing this platform to you guys because this platform is free in the beginning, okay? It is free until you start filing a certain amount of, uh, of claims, right? So this is Office Ally, um, and it is a clearinghouse, okay? There are some... Um, I think I'm an insert. I probably post in the next video, a insert of a CSM 1500. Well, you'll see it on here. Um, so I recommend submitting your CSM 1500s online and not the paperweight. There are people that still submitted the paperweight, but that that's just not in my ministry because it's going to take too long. Um, and plus you have to pay for those with Office Ally in the beginning, if you don't submit that many claims, you can do it for free. And then if you have to, uh, if you start getting, um, if you start submitting a lot of claims, which is a good thing, you'll pay, you'll have to pay $35 a month. And that's not bad, okay? It's okay to spend $35 a month. So if you're not, if you don't have an EHR system, this video is for you. So this is why I'm making this video because I want to show you how to submit a claim but today's video is going to be the introduction of the csm 1500 i wish somebody would have explained the csm 1500 to me because when i got denied i did not know how to interpret what they was writing i was like what so that's where we're at so in here in office ally office ally should cut me a check because a lot of people might end up working with them right so here we go over here we got some little um y'all look over here to your left over here in the cone okay so you got some you got the little buttons over here right so here we go right here the online claim entry right you go here to create a professional csm 1500 boom that's what we're gonna do we're gonna create a professional csm 1500 okay 
So there you go, 1500. Right here is the pay your name. I'm gonna explain this to y'all in this video. So this is basically what a CSM 1500 do is it tells the um, insurance company a story. It tells the insurance company who the patient is and not only who the patient is, but also who provided the services. Way that, where you provided the service, it, it is a story, okay? Remember that, keep that up in your mind. It's a story. Um, so you got the pay your name, the insurance company right here. You'll put their name, um, their number. A lot of um, insurance company has a pay your ID. So it's probably like a five digit number. So you can figure that out and stuff like that. So you got the address, the city, um, state and zip. So then you come down here and you do the health claim um, form, all right? So here's the health claim form. So you got a number. This is number two, you guys. Let me say that. This is number. So you see right here is the number one right here, right here. I'm circling. Can y'all see? Number one, right? That's super important because when they respond back to you, the insurance company, they're going to be like, um, they'll say line item, item one or line item 24A. It's incorrect or something like that. So you got line item one. You choose which um, which insurance do they have? Do they have Medicare, Medicaid, Tricare, Champ, Champ VA? I don't know. Group health um, plan, FEA, whoever these people is or other. Um, so private private commercial insurance will be group health care, Medicaid or Medicare. It's very, very self-explanatory. So then right here, you got in 1A. All right, y'all see, I hope y'all see that. That is the insurance ID number. So whatever ID number is on the insurance card, put it right here. All right, then you come over here to, to number two. You got, hold your mule, okay? Number two, you got patient's name, last name, first name, middle initial. Then you got number three. You got patient's birth date. You know, you do it 09-30-1995, okay? Sex, all right? You got the female, what they got? Female, male, or unknown, okay? And then you got the insured name right here. This is for the person who the insurance name is in, right? So let's say if you got a spot, you got a wife that comes, but the insurance is in her husband name. Her husband name is going to go right here. And the spouse who is the, whoever the person is that is your patient goes right here. So if it's the wife, her name will go right here, her name, her um, her date of birth and her sex. If it's the husband, his name and date of birth and insured address. Okay. If they don't live together, it's it, if they live together, it's the same. If not, okay, that's all right. But you got patients address, city, state, you know, regular demographic, um, zip code, telephone number. If you want to put it in there, you can put it in there. Um, patients relationship to ensure either they are the self, spouse, child, or other. Okay. And then again, here's the, here's the person that name is on the card. Their name goes in box seven their name and information. So where you will see that this would different at is when you have a college kid that's not living at home, but they're still on their parents' insurance. So the parent's name will be, the parent's information will be in box number seven, but the child who is, who is the, um, the child of the insurance, their information will be here, even though they're adult, okay? Y'all get it. If y'all don't, hop in the comment section below and I, I'll explain it to you a little bit more. Okay, let's see. Shout out and touch that and now it won't go down. All right, let's go. Come on. Um, I, it's unknown, sis. Oh. All right, so over here, number nine, other insurance names. So if a person has two policies, like if they got commercial insurance, they got Medicaid. If they got Medicare and they got Medicaid. Okay, so both you want to put both of the policies on here. Even though Medicaid is not going to pay Okay, they're not gonna pay extra because if the end the um the regular policy has already paid out over the amount that Medicaid is willing to pay, they're not gonna pay you at all, but you can still submit your money. Okay. So you got other insurance, insurance name. So you will put their name, you know, you'll put their policy um or group number and stuff like that. So that goes in, in box number seven. 
I mean, box number nine, excuse me. Box number eight, you don't have to fill it out. This, oh, let me give a disclaimer. This is for therapists only, mental health therapists in private practice. This video is only for us, okay? I think, and also maybe um, nurse practitioners, but anybody else outside of that, this video is kind of like not for y'all, okay? Because <laughs> it may be different, I don't know. But you got right here in number 10, we got is patient's condition related to employment or employment, auto accident or other accident. This box, if you're using a patient insurance, should always be no because the in insurance company will not pay you if it's related to employment, if it's related to an automobile accident, because they feel like that the job should pay for their insurance and that the automobile should pay for their insurance, okay? I mean, to, to pay for the um, sessions. So you can fill out number 11. That is the insurance policy group number or number. You know, the insurance date of birth, you know, put that. Um, and then if you want to put the plan name, you can put the plan name right there, okay? So we're going to go down a little bit further. So under look, look right here, okay? So you got nine, look at the numbers, okay? The numbers are super important, like I said earlier. So you got 9A, B, 9, 9A, 9B, 9C, 9D. All of this right here goes, goes with box number nine right there, okay, y'all? So then you come down a little bit more. You got patient, authorized, signatures, signed, date, and all that kind of stuff. So you hit yes, and it's going to be the date, whatever you fit it out. Number 14, you need to fill this out. Date of current illness. So if I seen, so if I seen a patient on yesterday, the date of the current illness will be January the 20th, 2021. Okay. And then you got the qualifiers, onset of current symptoms or illness or, you know, last menstrual cycle. Yeah, I always put 431, okay? <laughs> so I always put 431 because I'm not dealing with pregnancy. So you can fill out box 14. You can fill out box 15. If you want to put the um, latest visit or consultation, you can put that right there in box 15, right? And you can put whatever date you saw the patient on last. Um, you don't have to fill out 16. You don't have to fill out 18. You don't have to fill out 20. Okay. So here we go. We go to 21. This is the diagnosis or nature of illness. Okay. So here we go. We're diagnosing the folks and stuff like that, y'all. And so this is where you put your diagnosis at right here. So if you're going to use depression, so it'll be an F33 one or either f33.1 or if you're going to use anxiety it's going to be f41.9 or f41.9 okay always you when you're using office ally always make sure it is on the icdc 10 not icdc icdc college icdc college but make sure it is on the icd 10 because i have it has rejected a lot of my stuff because for whatever reason icd 9 was clicked i don't know um, so you do have to, um, if you are needing to resubmit a claim, you will use box 22, but I'm explaining it in a, another video, right? So in prior authorizations, yes. Okay. Some of these Medicare people need prior authorizations. So you would just put the number right there. You will fill out box number 23. So let's go on down to the meat and the potatoes of what we got going on in here. One of the most important parts. The claim, what we put in box 24 is where we put the actual um, date of service and where you actually start really and truly putting the information in. So you got 24, look, again, look at these um, numbers and alphabets up here. So you got 24A, that's important, 24B, 24C, 24D, 24E, 24F, G, H, I, J, okay? When the insurance company gains, if you get denied, they're going to refer back to this right here, 24A or whatever, you know? So right here is the date of service. So whatever date you've seen the person on. So usually we see people all in the same day. So you got from, so if I saw a person today, it would be January the 21st through, um, let me see. No, okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to explain all this in the, in the other video, right? 
So it'll be from January 21st to 20 um, to 2021. You got the place of service, emergency, CPT, modifier right here, diagnosis point, pointer, charges, days or units, and et cetera. And rendering provider ID. This is where your NPI number goes in, in, um, in J. So you got your federal tax ID, if you want to use that or you want to use your social security number. You got patient's account number, accept assignment, should always be yes. If not, you're getting denied. <laughs> Total charges, amount paid. You know, you can fill this out right here. Date of initial treatment, lay, um, latest visit or consultation, supervising position, supervising position, MPI, supervising position, ID, and all the other great stuff. And then you have service facility and location and information and billing and provided information and phone number. All right, so this is what a CSM 1500 looks like. Do not be afraid of this because in the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit afraid, but <laughs> thank God we made it through it. So y'all stay tuned to next week's video where we will come and we will talk a little bit more in depth on how to complete one of these, all right? So nonetheless, y'all make sure y'all drop below in that, um, in the comment box and let me know what y'all thought of it thought about this video y'all make sure y'all like share and subscribe to this youtube channel and make sure y'all tell people what we are doing over here so that we can continue to grow in jesus name amen we are trying to grow and we're trying to get monetized this year we helping people we helping we not only are we helping you guys as therapists but we're helping you guys help your clients we're helping change this life we're helping building the kingdom and all that other great stuff so nonetheless y'all Share this video. Y'all make sure y'all comment below. Let me know what y'all think. Um, like, share, subscribe to this YouTube channel so we can get monetized. All right. Bye, y'all. Talk to y'all next week. Bye. <laughs>